While monitoring the airways, I spy a greasy little beast. I think I'll chew him up in my lysosomes and have a fancy feast. I try to chew the microbe up, but I'm in vesicular confusion. The beast has interfered with my phagolysosomal fusion. This bug must be a pathogen, cause it is very devious. It messes me up in ways that are truly quite mysterious. But I don't despair, because I know I have my cousin up my sleeve. My cousin will ingest the beast and for the lymph node, he will leave. My DC cousin is a mensch with me through thick and thin. His TLR is Teltraf 6 to make poly ubiquitin. NF Kappa B to the nucleus, that is its new jurisdiction. It starts to make some B7 and help with IL 12 transcription. That combination of IL-12 with signals 1 and 2 tells the naive T-cell exactly what to do. The T-cell makes some T-bet, a transcription-driving hammer. It starts to synthesize a lot of interferon gamma. TH1 cells come to the lung where we macrophages wait we need to get some gamma before it gets too late. Oh, the gamma is so good to me. I no longer feel inferior. I chew the beast up into bits. Goodbye, mycobacteria. There are two important sentinel cells that we'd like to consider today uh, that are in every tissue. So one type of cell is called a macrophage. This is a phagocytic cell. Uh, it plays a role in homeostasis. It clears apoptotic cells or dead cells. But also if we are challenged with a pathogen or some microbe, the pathogen can be ingested. It can then be taken into a structure called a phagosome which fuses with lysosomes and in the lysosomes the pathogen is eliminated. So this is what typically happens but obviously sometimes uh, the innate immune system and macrophages can be overwhelmed so we do have a backup system. We have another cell type called a dendritic cell so DCs for short and what dendritic cells do is they also can ingest things but their goal is to ingest the proteins from pathogens, so proteins such as this, which will be taken up, which will be chewed up into peptides inside the dendritic cell. That's a processing step. And then these peptides will be placed on the dendritic cell on an MHC molecule. So you're going to have MHC plus peptide. So the MHC and peptide are going to be eventually recognized by a T-cell when this dendritic cell migrates to the draining lymph node. Okay. And the lymph node is where T-cells will be activated. So another molecule that will be turned on in the uh, dendritic cell, so microbial substances, stuff from the pathogen other than proteins, uh, but can include certain proteins, can activate certain receptors on dendritic cells, so toll-like receptors or TLRs, and they can induce the expression on the cell surface of a protein that we call B7. It's also known as CD80. And there's another form of it called CD86. So uh, this will serve as a flag for danger when the dendritic cell makes its way into the lymph node. Uh, uh, yet something else that needs to be turned on in these dendritic cells is a, some cytokines. So depending on the nature of the pathogen, some cytokines might be made by this dendritic cell 
and some of these cytokines will play a role in instructing T cells to specialize uh, so that we have the right type of T cell for a specific pathogen. So let's think about the lung. So in the lung, let's assume that we have an infection with the microbe that causes TB. So that's mycobacterium and tuberculosis, so MTB. And uh, the, every air sac in the lung is lined by macrophages. So there are macrophages in every tissue everywhere, but the air sacs are lined by macrophages. And so if some microbe such as MTB were captured by a macrophage, the only problem we have is MTB has the ability to make certain molecules that can impair the phagosome from fusing with the lysosome. So we have defective phagolysosomal fusion. As a result, this microbe is going to sit inside these vacuoles in the phagosomes, not be digested, not be uh, eliminated, and it can then spread, and that's a problem for us. So this is where adaptive immunity comes in, and the hope is that we can contain an intracellular pathogen with the specialized type of T-cell. So when we think about T-cell subsets, well, one of the subsets we think about, and that's the one that's going to be relevant in today's context, so for intracellular pathogens, we have T-cells that will polarize using a cytokine called IL-12, which the dendritic cell makes in this case, to become a Th1 cell. And Th1 cells will secrete a lot of interferon gamma. And interferon gamma can do various things, including help activate phagolysosomal fusion and clear a pathogen that is hiding within a phagosome. The other types of T-cell which we won't touch on in any detail uh, today are Th2 cells, which are aimed more at toxins and venoms and worms, and uh, Th17 cells. And Th17 cells are designed to deal with extracellular bacteria and fungi. So to, to recap how T-cell activation occurs, so when a dendritic cell goes to the T-cell zone in the lymph node, it bears on its surface, so it has the uh, MHC molecule with the peptide over here, so we see that here. And then we have B7 over here, so this is B7 pointed out over here. So the MHC molecule and peptide will activate the T-cell receptor, this is the T-cell receptor here, whereas the uh, B7 molecule is going to activate CD28, which is a co-stimulatory receptor on the T-cell. So the T-cell is going to get signal 1 through the T-cell receptor, so that's signal 1, and signal 2 is going to be through CD28. This combination of signals is sufficient to cause the T-cell to proliferate and expand. However, we might want to polarize the T-cell to a particular phenotype, which is going to be most helpful in a specific pathogen context. So in the case of an intracellular pathogen, how this is going to happen is that yes, we'll have signal 1 and signal 2. So here we have signal 1 and here we have signal 2. So signal 1 again, T-cell receptor, signal 2, co-stimulated receptor. But then signal 3 is going to be through a cytokine. So a microbe, an intracellular pathogen, is likely to induce the dendritic cell to secrete IL-12. So the third signal is going to come in here through the IL-12 receptor on the T-cell. So this T-cell is going to proliferate and expand because of signals 1 and 2. But because of the additional triggers, through the specific cytokines that are, it's exposed to. In this case, the T cell will go on to become Th1 cells. These T cells will be Th1 cells, and they're going to secrete a lot of interferon gamma, and this interferon gamma is good for, in this context because it can help eliminate a pathogen, and we can then say goodbye, mycobacteria.